Hey buddies, it's first day today. It's time for us to learn Rust. Yeah, let's do that. So in today's video, we will see what's Rust, why it is so useful, and why it is so loved by the communities. Rust is a language that becomes very popular over the years and is the most loved language since 2016. So yeah, we should give it a try. And today we'll see that together and I will share with you my journey learning Rust. So what I understand now is that Rust is a very really fast language. It is done for performance and memory efficiency. So it used a system called ownership for the memory safety, also for the thread safety. It has a rich type system and it's great for productivity because there is a really great documentation here. But I also saw that there are so many books here and documentations here. Also has a low level programming language. It has a package manager, which is incredible. Like imagine if you could have a package manager in C. Also Rust seems to be really useful for anything like creating CLI tools, creating some front-end also. You can use that with WebAssembly. So it's a system level language then you have predictable performance and it's also very useful for embedded system. You can do basically everything with this language. These are few of the companies that use Rust in production. So there is Firefox, Dropbox and Cloudflare and it seems to have so many rich features. So let's explore that. And I think I think Rust basically aims to replace the C language or wants to be an alternative and implement so many things like a package manager that could be really useful for us. So in other words, Rust could be as powerful as the C language but has so many rich features like the functional programming. This feature is really interesting because it's a new way to code low level things. So basically it's a low level language and you can choose your level of abstraction. But let's see now what is my plan to learn Rust. So my plan is to learn some algorithm with Rust. So I will learn about data structure and I will also learn to just manage the code and make that works all together and learn also about the compiler. So yeah, I will use a website called Exercism for this. And as a second project, I think I want to build the backend and a REST API. So we'll have to deal with multi-threading or just how we handle multiple requests at the same time. How do we get the data from our users and maybe how to connect to a DB, etc. So that's my plan to learn that. Also, I wanted to do a basic game, but yeah, we have already that to learn that's a lot and so that is a website that will allow us to learn the fundamental concepts so we will learn about the structure the structuring tuples vector maybe to deal with some api from the standard library i guess um functions obviously and maybe some other things so i see there is a macro here i don't know what's really a macro so i would like to to know more about it and the crates and i think the crates are the packages um so yeah let's see that i'm gonna do a lot of algorithms exercise it will be tough let's go <laughs> Okay, I think it's time for me to show you interesting things in Rust and what I've learned until now. Let's talk a bit about some Rust basics. So all the Rust code start with the main function as in a lot of other programming languages. And Rust is immutable by default. It means that everything is first immutable and you have to specify when you want to mutate something. It's done for efficiency and safety. Um, so you really want to know when you want to mutate something and that's make it really safe. Also, I don't specify here the type of these variables because Rust most of the time can do the type inference, which is what it is and it directly assign the good type for this variable. And for the types, we have all the types we need. Here the complete list of all the primitive types. As you see, we have int 8 bits, 16 bits, 32, 64, 128. We have pointer, slices, tuple, unsigned int, array, boolean, character, etc. So one of the biggest topics in Rust is the ownership. Rust doesn't integrate a garbage collector. When you allocate something in Rust, it's dropped at the end of the scope. Our scope here is the main. Also, Rust gives us a set of rules to take care of the 
safety of the memory. One rule of the ownership concept is that you could have only one owner of value. Here, for example, the st1 string is the owner of this string. But then if I want to give this variable into this one, it will move the ownership. Then the st1 is not the owner anymore. So if I want to use the st1 after, I won't be able to print and use the st1 here. You may be wondering why here that's a valid statement. Basically, for the basic types, Rust knows that he has to copy directly. It's like doing the copy method here. Why does that happen? It happens because here it's a nin32 integer type. And then you know exactly the size of this variable. Okay, a few more things that are interesting in Rust. So the match keyword is like the if else statement, but it ensure that you have handled all the cases when you want to do an if else. Look, if I remove this line, I won't be able to compile because the potential error is not covered. Then for the error handling, it's really powerful. But one more interesting thing, Rust implement the functional programming. So functional programming is a way to chain some action. So here the expect does exactly the same as the match. We have so many different things. You can use the unwrap, you can use the unwrap R our default, you can put a default value. There are so many things built in and that's why Rust is really, really cool to work with. And here is an example of the functional programming. Instead of doing the classic things in C, doing a for loop, taking care of the overflow with an incrementer, etc. Here you can just use the functional programming and all the tools the type has built in. So if we run it, as you see, we see hey buddies directly here. So a macro is a bit different than a function. A function can take one argument or more, but a fixed amount of arguments. While a macro can take a variable number of arguments, and that's really powerful. Here I can give as many arguments as I want, and I can directly print as many things as I want. Also, we need to talk about the threads. Threads is like interfaces in C++ or low-level programming language, and interfaces allows the user to share a common basis in their type. For example, here we are creating a structure, and we want this structure to have the summarized method that the thread summarizes implement. So we just have to implement the summary for a new article. Also, you can give a default implementation, but sometimes you will just want to re-implement by yourself the method. So one very interesting thing here is that you can specify in this function argument what traits it has to implement. So yeah, it's really cool because you will know that you have then these methods that is available and you can really control what you receive. So we still have a lot of things to learn, a lot of things to explore. But yeah, that was the basics. Okay, new day, new objectives. Today we will try to build a REST API in Rust, so a full web server multi-threaded. So basically a web server is a program that listens for requests and send over some responses. A REST API is just a way to structure this web server. So when it receives a request, it has to be formatted in a way that the server will handle and respond correctly. So as a front-end, for example, you can just ask for data to a web servers and get back in response all the data about a user or about a content on your page. And what we are going to build today is just web servers that listen over HTTP requests and send back some files and run all these requests in a multi-threaded environment. I think we finally got something. Here is our first version of our REST API. We have a main function that waits for connections. We take the incoming requests, which are some stream, and we handle them one by one with this function. This function is just a function that basically get the data of the request. So we have defined the path here that we'd want it to handle and depending of the path we will send back different file or doing different action so here i make for the sleep path i make this thread waiting for five seconds before returning the file also if we don't have any of this path we return the error.html file and yeah here we are creating the response basically it's a string and we flush the string back so i also manage the error by implementing a create my dependency here 
here is this error. Here, instead of just putting everything in a match, I define an enum of all the errors that I will potentially have, and I return this enum. So here I just have this keyword that is the same as doing a match, or just returning the specific error, and it works if I send a request. So I will open two terminals, and we will see the problem of this implementation. As you may see here, the problem of this implementation is that it is monotreaded. So I won't have the response back here until the first request will be over. So it will wait for 10 seconds and send back and process all the other requests because we are in an array here of stream. Now the goal is to move this code and make it multi-threaded. Guys, we finally managed to do it. What is the final result? So what we wanted is a pool of thread that takes the jobs that are available to do. So for example, a job could be just a request. Then we have this pool of thread that is waiting for the jobs and are basically waiting for a message to come. When they got a message, they got a job to do and they execute this job in function of what the job is. For example, it could be a job that means send a response to this address or just terminate this thread in case we want to shut down it. So we had to implement a message system to be able from the main thread to send into all the thread pool messages. So we want only one receiver and one sender. But the thing is that you can't share any data in between the thread. You, you can, but it's not really safe. Then we just had to use a mutex. Mutex is an object that allows a certain resource to be locked or unlocked. For example, in this thread, we are waiting for a message and when it gets a message, if the thread is not used, they will lock the resource. So they will lock the message. Then only this thread will be able to take this message. Then it's perfectly safe because only one thread, when it would be not used, will use this special resource. Basically, it's what we have done. Um, it took us a while to do it. I did like so many days of streaming. So by the way, make sure you follow this channel and my Twitch channel. Also, we still have so many things to learn. Like I didn't check any framework or a front-end framework also, but we need to do some refactoring and go a bit deeper and expand the features of our uh, REST API. But at least we learned so much by doing multi-threading. Uh, we learned about ownership a lot. So I highly recommend you to, to go this way. There is a really great documentation for Rust. It's the beginning of our Rust journey, but it's really cool. Rust is a cool, cool, cool language to work with. Then just give it a try. I see you around. Make sure you follow this channel. And yeah, see you.